Okay, so I've tried to work out how to brace my fuel tank in. I think I've come up with a good solution. I'm going to have three nylon or uh, webbing tie downs as well as a reverse bulkhead holding it down on top. Now, I've been wondering how I was going to um, sort of integrate that into my bulkheads and what I've found is some old carbon fibre paddle tube and these are old paddles that I've cut off over the years for stand-up paddle boards and you know, kayak paddles that I've made and uh, this tube is about um, four layers of 180 gram carbon so it's a fairly substantial tube and I'm going to hole saw through the bulkheads um, at, e at each side of the tank and then I'll be able to pass a strap through that some sort of either a stainless strap or a nylon strap or a webbing tie down or something like that to get the basis of the holding mechanism and secondly I'm going to put a reverse bulkhead over the top that actually holds that tank in place and then the floor will be glassed down onto that so there's no chance of movement um, the issue I guess is that no matter up and down movement I've got to stop but I've also got to stop the forward and backward movement as well. I get that sort of um, that surface reaction that you get with fuel inside a tank now there are baffles inside the tank but we've got 300 litres or 270 odd litres of fuel moving back and forward need to stop all movement and uh, and I think this is going to be a good solution to start with there's a, a number of things I've got to do to make sure these things are solid but there's also the bulkheads holding it in place so there's a number of, uh, of ways I've stopped the movement however I think um, hole sawing that and mounting them into the bulkhead I've got a pretty decent hole saw I'm going to go and have a hack and epoxy them in place and then I'll be able to at least start the process of being able to uh, to secure them in place so it's been a bit of a a bit of an exercise trying to work it out, but I think I've, uh, I've got it and I'm going to go ahead with it now. You can see now I've got everything roughed in. I've got my limber hole protectors in and I've also put the carbon tubes in. Now, the, I didn't film um, putting them in because I got into a bit of a mess. I tried the bagging technique. It was just a joke. So they're all now in place and they're set. So I'm going to go and start on the other side and get it to the same level. And then I can come back and uh, start to design the V here, which once again is going to have the composite angle running lengthways as a slat for my fuel tank. And then once all that's done, I can get it all a nice sand out, get it all completed, get all these V's, all this foam all sealed, all glassed over, and then I can come in and uh, and wipe the whole thing out and basically put it into uh, put it into the memory banks. <laughs> So I had Johnny here the other day, he's cut me some perfect templates off my fuel tanks and what I've got to do is I've got to cut them to fit in here exactly right and, uh, and I've actually uh, determined that I'm going to go for a level fuel tank. I mean I thought about sloping it slightly back towards the, uh, towards the intake but I'm sort of trying to avoid having uh, any of the detritus and everything being picked up in there so I can still clean it out with a pump and a separate hose. but. Uh, the idea of, uh, of this is that I can get an exact level on all the way through so that I can then put in my angle and, uh, and reinforce the, the actual slack bed for the underneath of the fuel tanks.
Okay, so it's not just good enough to have foam, you need to seal it and then you need to glass over it. So I'm putting in a uh, more of this bedding compound on the top of this, I've actually uh, caved it out so there's plenty of bedding compound in here and then it's going to be glass over with two layers of 600 double glass to strengthen it before I put in the uh, slats for, the, for the, um, the fuel tanks. But I've got everything else glued in here so I'm squeezed in. But essentially, so a little bit of this stuff I want. Sealing between there and the foam, very important to do that so you don't end up with any moisture in there. Applying the peel ply, I'll get a ah oh, shit, I'm sucking the one beyond me. <laughs> yeah. oh, it's peel ply over the top. Do a waste of peel ply, but anyway. <clears throat> This process is pretty tedious guys but it just has to be done and it has to be done right because you're never going to have access to this compartment ever again once this floor is sealed down. The coving and the clean up and the masking and the taping and all the extra effort um, hopefully will be worth it in the long run. I need to make sure that this is a very sound base for the fuel tanks and uh, you know, I know it's probably the most tedious video you've ever watched, but uh, you know, you cannot imagine the discomfort and the the uh, the effort involved in getting these uh, these braces and all the bulkheads to a level that I'm satisfied with. Well, it's been a big week. Um, this week, I've pretty much dealt with the fuel tank uh, holds, and they're completely um, sealed, glassed, sanded and they're ready for the final layer of laminate along the top of the bracing and on those limber holes. So everything is basically done on that one. And rather than do one side complete, I decided I will add all the tools out and I'll add all the gear out. You guys will agree with me there. Um, the trick is to, to try to keep moving. So I'm doing both sides at once, trying to get them both ready at the same time. So this one down here, is pretty much done. Um, I need to come in tomorrow, it's Saturday tomorrow, Janet's away on a girls weekend, so boys get to work. I like those weekends sometimes. But uh, you know, now I can get in here and just all I have to do is lay a couple of layers of 600 over the top of this, this ridge here and over the top and then do the glassing on the limber holes and get them done as well. Once they're done, I can pretty much come and give it a final light sand. Hopefully it only needs a light sand. I'm gonna peel apply it while I, after I glass it. And then I'm gonna wipe this compartment and the other compartment out. Now, if I need to put any conduits or anything through here, um, such as bilge hoses, electrics or anything, what I'm gonna do once it's wiped out, I'm then gonna hole saw in the bulkheads here and put in 100 mil PVC pipe, storm water pipe, and I'll put it in about that long so that I've got plenty of room to feed them through. And I might end up with two or three across the top here feeding into the engine bays, obviously, for the uh, the fuel, for the venting hoses and everything. So that's probably better, and I'll epoxy those in rather than trying to make a fiberglass tube like I did here with the limber holes down here. Um, Look, to be honest, they, they, because they're up high, it won't really matter. There's never going to be water ingressing into the foam there, and I can epoxy those in once it's all flow coated. I don't want to be trying to flow coat over the top of epoxy because that's not going to be good. That stuff will not set once you put it on top of epoxy. It just simply doesn't go off. It doesn't like the chemical reaction. So, yeah, done. Six days or five days of solid work in these two compartments. They're done. All Good morning guys, Saturday morning. Uh, Janet's away for the weekend, so I thought I'd take the opportunity, we're gonna put in a big weekend's work up here on the uh, on the hull. Um, yesterday I finished another four hour epic sort of sanding and detailing around all the little radiuses and everything to make sure that when I laminate this stuff in, that it sets and it's done properly with no voids. Now, preparations, everything. I've got a box full of stuff here. Now in this box here, I've got um, acetone, rollers, brushes, gloves, catalyst, 
I've been cutting cloth for the last hour. Uh, pretty much got everything I need. Now I'm gonna put one layer of 300 CSM on the foam just to let it settle and give it some surface area to bite. And then I'll be wrapping it with a 600 double bias and then peel ply. Now that's gonna be more than enough on top of those uh, on top of those bulkheads because then I'm gonna put some slats on top. So ultimately they're not gonna be the bearing the weight of the, uh, of the tanks. The slats will be, so all I'm trying to do here is get a good seal and a good coverage on top of it. So I'm gonna spend the day up there, jam down in that bloody compartment again but you know that's the way it is here on the hulls i've spent uh, the last two and a half months down in the bilges on my haunches and yeah it's been pretty tough i've got to be honest it's been tough on the old bod and climbing in and out yep that's just the way it is i can't get out of this freaking bilge quick enough i keep saying it but it can't happen quick enough all right so here i go i've uh, got my <laughs> bucket of gear respirator Gloves, all the works. My resin here, gonna give it a good stir because it is cool today. It's like probably about 15, 16 in here, but outside around about 10. So I'm gonna get into these limber holes down in here and get them glassed, get them done, and then I can start, come in and give it one final light sand out and basically white it out. That compartment's gonna be done and then I'll work my way over to the other side. It'll probably take me all day to do this one because there's quite a bit of work to do in here. A lot of little detail that has to be done inside these boxes. But once they're done, I can stick my fuel tanks in, put the lid on and, uh, and forget about them for a while. And all I've got to do then is put in the strapping and a subsequent bulkhead that goes across the top there to hold the tank in uh, as, uh, as a precaution as well as the strapping. Well, I'm just about over being down in the bilge. Um, I've just spent two full days down in here glassing in the limber holes and the tops of those tank supports. And, you know, using that oscillating tool, what normally would have taken me, you know, probably a, an hour or so to cut all that excess off, um, has taken about five minutes with that oscillating tool. Now, those new 
blades are actually designed for cutting fiberglass. So the great thing about these oscillating tools is there's not a lot of dust. So you don't have to uh, you know, worry about airborne dust. It pretty much falls straight to the ground because it's not flying it everywhere. But so what I've got to do now is just give it all a light sand and ultimately um, tidy up any little rough edges and pretty much that's ready for flow coating. I've done some pretty shitty jobs in my time, but this one takes a cake. This has uh, been a solid week of down on my haunches and just sanding and detailing, and you can't imagine just how much detail has gone into those three little supports and the limber holes. It's been an absolute mongrel, and uh, I've got no circulation left in my legs, but that is now done and ready to white out. It's uh, been an absolute monumental task, and. Uh, yeah, I don't want to have any dags in there, and I think I'm dag free now. Okay, so I need to make some mounts for my pumps, uh, bilge pumps, and essentially any of my macerators and stuff like that. And they can't simply be screwed into fiberglass, it's just not good enough. I need to unfortunately put some plywood in there. So I've made up these, uh, I've cut up these uh, squares, 15 centimetres uh, square, and then basically I've got to put a 45 degree bevel on them because wherever you glass down on and make a core, you should always bevel it at a 45 degree angle to ensure that you get a really strong tabbing of it. I mean, it's not going to hold a lot of weight, but I want to do them right, and then ultimately I'm going to flow coat over the top of them and then drill holes, fill them with epoxy, and then drill in again to ensure that that would never ever seize water. Um, but essentially, uh, the way I'm doing these is with my bandsaw. I tried to use a workbench but couldn't quite work out how to do it uh, in the time that I've got. So I'm basically doing it on my bandsaw. I've set up a little jig. It's going to take a little bit of time, but you know, well worth it to get that get that uh, 45 degree bevel on it. So I'm down here in the fuel tank uh, well, and it's time. I'm going to fit about um, four of these mounts. Now, you can never have enough mounting points for brackets, pumps, anything like that. Now, I've got to remember that I've got to have access to them once I glue the floor down. There is going to be access holes in the floor. However, um, it's important that I put these where I can reach them so that I can mount brackets you know, electrical wiring or anything. So I've made up these, I've been making these up out of uh, marine ply, and they're gonna be glued to the hull side here. Um, in, the, in the fuel tank well, because I'm about to flow coat this out, so I've gotta basically epoxy glue these in place, then I have to glass over the top of them, then I have to tidy that up, and then I can flow coat out this chamber. There's not gonna be a lot of other services within this, um, this fuel tank bay, everything tends to come up out of the floor and into cupboards behind because everything tends to be above water line in this boat apart from macerator pumps. So that's a great thing because that means you're not down in the bilge trying to service pumps and the like. You sort of have access to them in cupboards and storage compartments. But for now, I'm going to mount these. Um, they got, uh, basically, a good way to mount them is I, I smother it and basically soak it in epoxy and then I'll screw it in place into the foam core. Now, fortunately, I have 30 mil foam, so I can put a small self-tapping screw like this into, uh, into the foam, hold it in place, remove the screw, fill the hole with epoxy, and basically it's done. And then I'm going to have to laminate over the top of all of them. Now, I've put in four in each fuel tank um, compartment just for future use. I have no use for them at the moment because everything else is above this particular um, compartment. Until you build a fiberglass boat, you couldn't possibly imagine how much joy you can get from ripping peel ply off. It's one of those simple little pleasures that gives you a good result at the end of the day. So I've finished the mounts here. Basically, you've just got to peel it off. 
perfect finish, light sand, done. Probably don't even need to sand it, but I'm gonna do it because uh, today is a very exciting day. I'm going to um, flow code out the two fuel tank um, compartments and I'm very excited about it because it signifies the end of a really long period down in these chambers. You can't imagine how much satisfaction I feel when I get to the end of a part of a job because so far, up until this whole build, or during this whole build, I simply have not finished one single thing. 